Hey there, and thanks for tuning in. Today, I have a really special video coming to you from Charlottesville, Virginia, and Birdwood Golf Course at Boarheads Resort. This was probably one of my favorite, if not now my top course in Virginia that I've played. I believe the UVA golf team either practices or plays their matches here. But as you can tell from the title, this is a good, good inspired type match where I'll be playing my buddy Sean Newman in an 18-hole stroke play. Uh, he's playing to a 12, I'm playing to a 6, so pretty much giving him 6 strokes, and we're playing from the blue tees today. And so Micah, Grant, Garrett, good, good boys if you're watching, hope I make you proud. Hole 1 starts you off with a straightforward par 4. Oh, For context, today's weather, I think it was mid-40s. It was freezing to start when we were warming up. But uh, you can see we all have the layers on. I think the hood comes on at some point throughout the round. And it does warm up, but doesn't help that it's pretty windy and cold to start off. So I've never played this course, and you'll hear me throughout constantly ask Sean, who's played this numerous times for advice or where to go. He told me long and left and listen to the audio. That's perfect. Honestly. Wow, thank you so much, Sean, for honestly telling me that I'm perfect. Hopefully, you know, I have like a tap-in birdie putt based on his comments. So really looking forward to that. And yikes, we're in the rough. Thanks, Sean. That's basically a stroke. You owe me a stroke next time we play. Get in. Get in. Oh, baby. So we weren't able to warm up on the putting green. We were kind of rushed to get ahead of a twosome behind us. But I thought it hit the perfect chip and it sailed. Like and from Sean's putt here, oh. I thought he hit a pretty perfect or damn good putt and it actually rolled another four ish five feet um so this is oh, right, this is not a good oh, start i miss a five footer for a tap and bogey oh. and sean misses like a four footer for a tap and bogey we're both one over to start hole two brings you the first par five of the front nine it's pretty straightforward from what sean tells me the first two shots you know there isn't anything too tricky it's the approach you have to think about so basically I ask him if a snap hook into the water is the play here. He said yes. So there's my snap hook into the water. Uh, you can see me kind of look back after my walk off the tee box to see if there was any hope of that staying in bounds. There was absolutely no chance. That was just yep. gone. Hate losing my soccer balls, but whatever. We'll live. Um, take a drop, hit a pretty good second shot, and then here's Sean's second shot. Uh, he pured it, it just leaked right, and I think it caught either the tree or just short of it, but he'll have an interesting shot next. And then this is just not a good look. Uh, that That's a shank forward. Uh, take an 8-iron from about 145, 150 out and just shank it. It's cold, it's early, so it's okay. And then there's Sean with an interesting uh, lie. He was able to get a pretty good punch out. He was really smart. He was thinking about going for it. I think we talked him out of it. He had a good punch. He had a really unlucky chip there. You can see it took a bad bounce and went into the rough. Another one yard, I think that rolls right up onto the green. Here I am hitting a 60 degree, about 45, 50 yards. I hit my exact landing spot and it did not check. And for anyone looking for free putting lessons, I'm gonna stop commentating and just watch the video. We are so bad. That's honestly so bad. And that's a triple for your boy. Not looking great as I'm also giving him three aside pretty much. As we get to this tee box, Sean tells me that this is a Davis Love the Third designed course and how he loves his blind tee shots. Never playing this course, I didn't really know what to go for. So that I think is... we picked a tree, I hit it, and he tells me that's pretty good. And poor Sean here. Is this a joke? There's literally one tree, a tall, skinny tree in this entire hole, and he happens to find his way behind it. Um, my thought process here was a little bump and run and let it ride down that. I actually executed just not enough, and then... Completely elevated, so I can see the hill. Go ahead, dude, do your thing. You got this. I think I just wanted to show with the camera this shot and how ridiculous it is in terms of the slope and where he is. Like and for the record, we gave him free relief. He was on the cart path, so we let him drop. And here's Sean nice using shot. the force to stop his ball. 
If I knew he was going to be a Jedi, I would have asked for uh, more strokes or to play even. And so my bump and run from the previous shot ended up just short. I Texas wedge it and put it within a good, uh, I think, three, four feet. And then Sean hits a pretty good putt. I think he just um, missed his line by inches. And I'm lucky enough where I can clean up for par. So we're finally on the par train. So for this next hole, I think the camera is set up weird. The fairway is to the Whoa. right. So while his shot tracer and shot looks pretty damn good, if the fairway was there, it wasn't. Um, this is what hitting a fairway looks like. It's yes. no big deal. Just a little baby draw down the middle. Um, I actually decided just to take some off because I was trying to find my driver after that snap hook from hole two. So it only went 240, but I'm lucky I found the fairway. Sean hit a crazy recovery shot. That red dot there shows where his ball landed. I think he said he took a six iron, hit it about 180-ish, but put it back in play from another fairway. I also take a six iron and I was about 180 out. I think the play was not to go long, let it run short, but I was into the wind. So playing at about 170. And then Sean, I guess he likes his eggs scrambled because this man was scrambling on this hole and kudos to him. The fact he has a putt for par, um, you know, that that's crazy. I think he played the, the hole pretty well or as, as well as he could do. And then I have a 35 ish footer for birdie. Uh, I believe we went good good and par bogey for that hole now this is where things get interesting if you look really closely on the camera there's a foursome yes. we run into and they wave us through so they're just standing on the fairway as we tee off this hole is insane water everywhere right a complete dog leg to the right and so sean and i decided to just take our d's out and i'm talking about our drivers we we took our drivers out and smashed them uh into the fairway and we honestly hit two of our best drives of the entire day. You can see that it's basically an island green where the approach shot requires pretty good Dinner. precision. And shout out Stop. to the guy in the force Woo! ahead of us. He was like an 80 year old dude who said, uh, this plays extra long, take more club. I actually had my 52 degree. I decided to switch to my 48 degree, put it to within, as you can see, I think it was seven, eight feet, but end up missing the birdie putt but nothing wrong with the pars. So Sean goes up and down for Bogue. I have a tap in par. We're playing good golf. Going to pause commentary for a second and listen to Sean. Draw, draw, draw. You're good, you're past it. Draw. Okay, Sean, let's see if we're past it. And this hole, by the way, it's a really short par four. I think it was playing about 300 yards. I think Sean decides to go for it and he absolutely kills one. Uh, he got on, oh, shocker. I'm in the sand, Sean. Assuming you're watching this, that's another stroke you owe me, buddy. Next time we play, you now owe me two. Um, I had a really awkward lie, punch it out, not mad at it, and have a really good chip for a look at par. Um, Sean ended up just a little bit short of the green, probably 10 yards before. He finds his ball and has oh. a pretty good recovery shot uh, to basically putting. And so here's his birdie look. So Sean breaks our cardinal rule of leaving him short, but we give him that for par. And then here's my look at par. I was, oh my gosh, I thought I nailed it. I was about to walk it in, but uh, pretty bad bogey there, but on to a short par three. Oh my God. This was a very straightforward par three. It's playing about 130-ish. Uh, trouble left, trouble right. If you haven't noticed by now, and maybe I'm not doing yes. a good job commentating it, but... <laughs> There's just trouble everywhere in a lot of the holes and greens. I think that's what makes this course so tricky, but also so unique that you have to strategically play shots, don't go long, maybe miss in a certain direction. Uh, but anyway, I have a three, four footer for birdie. Yeah. And we drain it. I'm fortunate enough to have the first birdie of the day and Sean just misses. So the first birdie under my belt, I walk up to this tee box on cloud nine. And then we do that. that? If Goose hit? is watching, uh, he's probably thinking and probably shouted oh. at the screen, law of averages. It really is the law of averages. And then poor Sean, he just probably felt bad for me and hit one OB just to make me feel better about myself. Um, the funny part about this hole, it's a really, really short par four. Uh, strategy and placement oh, is more important than power. 
This is actually, if you hit a good shot, this is where you land. Look at that green. It's just surrounded by trouble everywhere. I end up in a really weird, awkward downhill lie. You can see I almost lose my balance. Um, uh, uh, I almost got lucky and it rode this hill down, but didn't go enough. Got caught in the second cut. Um, I decide to putt this because it's a purely downhill roll. I actually judge it pretty good, and I am not mad with the bogey after a shank off the tee box with a 7-iron. And here's Sean's putt. I think he was either just off the green or maybe on the farthest edge possible if we were playing the three putt snake game i would have just handed him the snake walked what? off the green and didn't even need to Good. see what would have happened i think he had that was probably like an 80 footer not even kidding and then hole nine ends on oh another par God. three it was 213 into the wind and i hit one of my purest hybrid strikes possible i hit that as hard as i could with a draw and it went about 200 ish yards so probably not hitting that green too often and then sean has a really really pure five wood strike unfortunately it was pulled a little bit and yeah. this shot it work. you know it, it was a shank but it ended up really really good i think you'll see in a moment he's putting for par to save i opt for a texas wedge here for everyone who's played with me uh you know i love a good old texas wedge put it to within about five six feet and then here's sean's putt for par that was a really good bogey from Sean. He was scrambling. Again, guy must love his eggs scrambled because he's a hell of a recovery guy, and um, that was a good bogey there. So front nine ends with a five-stroke difference.